Good morning, everybody. It's Meg or Elizabeth Story. That's my personal channel name. Welcome to Witchcrafted to the Wednesday um, craft. I am your Wednesday hostess, and I tell you what I have planned for everyone today is not what I had planned originally. Um, I was going to do a wreath, but since our wonderful sub Gretchen did a wreath, I figured everyone might need a little break from wreaths. <laughs> so, um, I didn't want to do two wreaths in a row. So, um, I kind of thought about it, what I wanted to share, and since I couldn't throw together like a um, craft craft that quickly, um, I decided to share a protection powder that is sort of loosely based on, well, maybe more than loosely. I think I changed a couple of things. Um, but the main, the, the idea or the bulk of the recipe comes from Scott Cunningham's book, um, Incense Oils and Brews. I think I took out the juniper and added rosemary and maybe switched around the, um, the amounts that you put in. So, okay, let's get started. Um, you will need a mortar and pestle. You will need a large bowl, which I'm sure everybody has all these things. Dill weed. Oh, no, woo-woo. And a cat. I'm just kidding. <laughs> you really, the cat isn't necessary. Frankincense. Dragon's blood. Salt. I have sea salt, but it doesn't have to be sea salt. Um, sandalwood. Cumin. Mugwort. And some sort of stone. If you want to do it like I do it, you don't have to put a stone or a crystal in there. I do. I use tiger's eye. You could use a just a plain quartz crystal and charge it for um, whatever intention you're going to do. But this is protection, a protection powder. So let's get started. So I'm going to make, oh, you're going to need a container to put your powder in. I'm probably going to make a fairly good bit. So I'm going to use a, a large bottle. Okay, so I'm going to start with the resins. So I'm going to take some dragon's, oh, I love dragon's blood. Who doesn't love dragon's blood, right? Look at those chunks of dragon's blood. So I'm probably going to do three, three big chunks of that. And I don't know why I'm putting it in my bowl instead of my mortar and pestle. So let's move this for a moment. Okay, so we're going to ground this up. You know, I've been meaning to buy one of those grinders that they sell on, I think it's eBay and Amazon with a little pinnacle on it. Ooh, shaking the table. But I haven't done so yet. But I kind of like using a mortar and pestle anyway because I feel like more of your energy goes into the herb. And... For the witchlings out there, you've got to stay focused. While you, well, you don't have to. That's the way I do it. I don't. It, please ignore me if I ever say you have to do something. Because on my channel, I'm just simply showing you stuff that I do. You don't have to do it. You know, and my way is not necessarily the right way or the only way. But um, I put my energies into it. I think about protection for whatever this is going to be used for. Okay, so that's nice and ground up. Yay! Okay, so now I'm going to do the frankincense, and I'm kind of running low on frankincense, so I'm only probably going to do like a hand, like a small handful. Can you see that? There you go. So I'm going to put that in. I need to order some frankincense. I have tons of myrrh. You can tell which one is my favorite. So, is everyone excited about Samhain? I swear, I'm just over the moon. The best time of year is coming up, I, to me, in the most magical type of time of year, for sure. You can just feel it in the air when the 
veil gets thin. Okay, now the frankincense is all nice and ground up. So now I'm going to do the sandalwood because I have two types of sandalwood in this jar. I have sandalwood incense that's already been ground up. I'm not going to use that. I want the red chips. So I'm going to do a fairly bigger chunk of the sandalwood because I have more of it. And I don't really measure. I, you know, I just don't. I kind of go with my gut on how much to use. So... But I mean, if you want to do it exactly, like I said, this is, you know, based on um, Scott Cunningham's book, and you can get it and look for the exact measurements. But I'm a fly by the seat of my pants kind of girl. Okay, so I'm going to ground the sandalwood up. I hope I'm not shaking y'all too bad, and this is going to be kind of harder, these little chips. And my cat, Rue, is destroying my building while I do this, but that's okay, I reckon. Okay, so this is going to take a little while to do right here. This is going to be stubborn. So... Gretchen's wreath yesterday was pretty awesome. I think we've had a great week of crafts on witchcrafting. I'm completely honored to be um, for so many wonderful and creative souls to have joined me on this channel. Okay. These chips are being little boogers. All right, I think I've got it as good as it's going to get for the purpose of this video. I don't want the whole video for y'all to be sitting there watching me grind stuff. I can always do it more later. Okay, so what I'm going to do, because I want kind of a lot of this, and I, the bulk of it can't be all resins because, you know, resins are kind of expensive. So I'm going to do three, woo, three big handfuls of salt. Salt is affordable and salt is excellent for protection, as is all of these herbs and resins here. So, we're going to grind up the sea salt. Okay, I think I'm just going to go through the list of things and like fine tune it after the video is over. Um, so, y'all aren't just watching me grind. Okay, so my mortar and pestle is getting kind of full. So I'm going to pour this into my bowl and work on the other ingredients. And I've got one of those like clay, um, let me show it to you, bowls where I can really use the pestle in here too if I need to. And isn't that cool? See the designs? I found that in a thrift store. Okay, so next we're going to do cumin. And I'm going to do three sort of small handfuls of cumin. Let's see? Okay. And then I'm going to do one Oh, we're never going to get there like that. Well, maybe we will. One fairly big handful of dill. So my thoughts are with dill that a little goes a long way. Okay. Now, we have everything in here but the mugwort, which I'm going to have to kind of... I was a lazy witch and didn't strip it <laughs> before I put it in here, so I'm just going to break some off. I've just dried it and stuck it in a jar. I get overwhelmed sometimes in the summertime when all the herbs come in. 
I don't exactly store them all nice and ground up like I should, but they all come in about the same time and it's just madness. I guess it's better to have them than not have them. So I'm going to do, because I love mugwort, and I think mugwort is great for lots of things, especially um, protection, although that's not one of the things most people think of mugwort as um, psychic ability, intuition, um, dreams, stuff like that. Okay. Let's see. I'm going to strip this one. And you know, if you're doing it like I am from here, it's okay to get the stems in there. I mean, I use just about every part of the plant. I mean, the stems have the same the same properties. Okay. I think that's good with the mugwort. Oh, you know what? I almost forgot rosemary. Rosemary is super good for protection. And the oak and the mystic was super nice and sent me a ton of it. And this is what I have put up from him. And I save my rosemary twigs too, because you can do um, little spells with twigs, bundle twigs up. Um, whatever number is good for your spell or you feel like with your intuition. And put a little petition paper in it and a piece of twine, a ribbon to tie around it that also fits with your um, what you're asking for. And toss it in the fire. It's a great little spell, so I save those. All right, so we need some rosemary in there. All right. Okay. And, you know, just use your intuition. I'm breaking this apart, so it's not like I can kind of pick a number, really. So, you know, I always ask the goddess to guide me when I'm doing stuff like this. Okay, I think we're good. So now I'm going to work on on this. And because they're plants, it's going to take a while. And, you know, you could also put some rosemary essential oil in here. Um, if you had some, that would be good. Or even frankincense or myrrh. I don't have any of that, those essential oils because they're too expensive. Okay. Um, like I said, I'm going to grind this up really good later. That'll be my, my chore after this video is done. But mix everything up. If you had to do two mortar and pestles, now you wouldn't have to if you weren't making a ton of it, you know. But mix this up, and here is where you would enchant your herbs, bless them, pray over them, say your spell, whatever you've got, whatever, however you normally do it, this is where you would do that. And what I'm going to do, before I put the herbs in, and these aren't ground up all the way, let me show you kind of idea what it looks like. The sandalwood gives it a um, almost a pinkish peach tint, and I'll get that all ground up later. I'm going to put, let's see, nine chips of rosemary into this little bag, and then put the bag into the jar. Did I just say nine chips of rosemary? I think I did. <laughs> Nine chips of tiger's eye. Oh my goodness. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. Be, and my thinking on putting it, putting it in a bag, of course, is, you know, I don't want to just carelessly have little tiger's eye chips around my house because I'm going to sprinkle this protection powder in my house around candles. Um, sprinkle it in a circle and I'm going to stand in it um, stuff like that and I don't want my pets eating these little chips of tiger's eye thinking that they're food so I'm gonna put it in one of these mesh little bags you can get them from the Dollar Tree like usually I don't know six for a dollar or something 
Um, and then you, I actually wish I had black for protection. I use the color black for protection a lot, but I don't have black. I just have white and yellow, but that's okay. Sometimes you just have to use what you have. So I'm going to put, um, I have already held these tiger's eye in my hand and resonated with them. So these are charged and I'm going to put these in the jar and then I'm going to add my powder once I've got it ground up on top. So until I use it, the herbs and the, the energies from the herbs and the energies from the tiger's eye will just kind of blend together. And that's what I want because tiger's eye is fabulous for protection. Okay, so that's it. That's pretty much all you have it. You know, like I said, you could keep going, add essential oil. You could add, you know, one thought for protection. For me, something that's very holy is dirt from where I used to live in Florida, um, from the beach there, because it's just my sacred space. I might put some sand in from there. But anything that symbolizes protection to you, you can throw it in there with it. And then, like I said, you know, you just use it, you can use it in other spells that are protection. Um, and you can sprinkle it around candles, sprinkle it in the corners of your house or your property, your car, put it in mojo bags. It's, it, you know, it's endless, the options. But, um, all right. Thank you for watching Witchcraftin'. I hope you have a blessed week. Um, thank you for watching us. Um, and have a great day. Alrighty, I'll see you next week. Blessed be.